Good afternoon and good morning, everybody. I'm James McLeod, the Director of Community at FINOS, and welcome to the FINOS Virtual Meetup, where we're joined today by Anders Walgren, uh, VP of Technology Strategy at Cloudbees, um, who are also FINOS members. And Anders is here today to take us through his presentation, From Jenkins to Resilient DevOps, a Blueprint. But before we actually get into Anders' talk, um, I'd like to let people know um, who have joined us today, if you have registered for this virtual meetup on the finos.org website, you have been put into a draw for a free Finos t-shirt that will be um, where two people will be picked at random. Um, also, remember to subscribe to Finos on LinkedIn and also on Twitter. And then whilst you're registering at finos.org, maybe you would like to sign up to some newsletters and also take a look at our Get Involved page. If you are an engineer or a developer and you want to get involved in any of the Finos projects, um, feel free to go over to github.com forward slash Finos to take a look at our projects um, and also start getting involved and start contributing. If you have any questions for Anders during his presentation, feel free to drop them into the chat um, in WebEx, where I'll ask Anders as part of the Q&A after the, after the presentation. And so, Anders, it's over to you now. Welcome. Uh, thank you, James, and uh, very happy to be here. And thanks, everyone, for, for, for joining. Um, I'm going to talk today, you know, try to you know, sort of keep it to, to 20, 25 minutes and, and, and talk about CloudBees and, and our journey. A little bit with our with our customers, especially with a with a focus on on the the finance area. Um, where where CloudB started was was with Jenkins. Um, you know, we we are the company that um, offers the you know the commercial version of Jenkins, if you will, as as one of our uh, several product offerings, and uh, and that's where we we started. and And I think to this day, we we you know maintain the highest uh, amount of uh, uh, commits to the to the Jenkins project. Uh, out there, because obviously a lot of folks who work on the project uh, work for uh, work for, for CloudBees, in addition to the the vast parts of the community that also uh, contribute uh, to to that uh, to that project. But you know, very early on, we've we've worked with uh, companies in in the financial services area, and and also at my my former company, which which uh, joined uh, CloudBees about eighteen months ago. We've we've worked for many years uh, with uh, with the financial uh, industry, kind of solving problems and. I'm not going to read these quotes to you because I, I always feel awkward reading other people's quotes. But uh, you know, people say nice things about us. I guess is what I'll say. Um, you know, and, and and we like to work with this industry because it it brings a lot of rigor and thought and and uh, uh, and, and and those kinds of interesting things uh, to to the problem. And, and and that's kind of fun to to work with. And it's been a you know it's been a kind of a wild journey for for Jenkins and and for Cloudbees. Um, you know, the, the, the graph on the left is sort of the definition of up and to the right, uh, if you will. Um, you know, the, the number of um, uh, Jenkins servers out there in the world. And these are just the ones that, you know, kind of are not sitting behind firewalls and, and we don't know about. Um, or, yeah, or, or it, it's huge. And, and the analysts, um, you know, speak to, uh, to the performance and, and the strategy that, that we bring to that problem. Now, Financial industry, you know, has an, an interesting set of dynamics. You know, there, there are many industries out there that that are kind of unique and, and, and interesting, and, and finance is, is is definitely one of them. And there are several lenses uh, through which uh, financial companies look at their digital transformation and you know, sort of life in general. But speaking specifically to to the idea of, of digital transformations, um, one of the unique aspects is, is governance, right? I mean, the 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 Governance is always top of mind in, in finance. And, um, you know, how do we assure separation of duties, which is kind of the phrase we use in, in the US, although I don't believe that actually appears in any of the laws. Um, but, but the notion of, you know, keep, keep the developers out of production and keep the ops people out of the code, um, you know, that, that, that sort of thing. Um, how do we enforce controls? Um, how do we make sure that only the right people are committing, only the right people are pushing into production? Um, how do we make sure that all the right things happen before uh, we push into production? Um, how do we, you know, how do we ensure that uh, that we have the right governance in place, the right controls in place, all, all of those things? Most companies would would say that they those are always important, if, even if you're not a bank, even if you're not a large financial institution or a small financial institution. But the truth is, for for 
for for uh, for finance, it's different, you know, because people go to jail ultimately if they don't do these things right, uh, and and if they're not done right, they can also be quite quite of an quite an existential problem for for companies. Uh, so that's definitely one of the one of the lenses that uh, that the industry looks at uh, at digital transformations. Second thing is adaptability. Um, finance has historically, you know, obviously financial industry has been around for you know hundreds of years. Uh, this is something that's just been a basic part of, of human life for, for a long time. But it's also been um, an early adopter of technologies, um, you know, moving from uh, pen and paper ledgers uh, to computers uh, happened, you know, fairly early. And um, the, the, the financial industries, trading companies in particular, historically were, were large, voracious consumers of, of technology and, and quite innovative uh, in technology as, as well. But as you, you know, as we all go along and as technologies change and evolve, that does leave uh, a financial industry with an interesting, you know, kind of conundrum that, you know, to some extent we all have, which is technologies change very fast. What do we do with the old technologies? Um, you know, the, 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 the mainframes are still in use. The, the 1980s technology is still in use. The client server 1990s technology is, is still in use. Web 1.0 still in use, you know, all of these things are still out there. We don't retire products just because the technology we built them on is not the technology we would use to rebuild it if we were rebuilding it today. And of course we don't go rebuild everything every time there's a new technology switch. That would be a little bit like, you know, raising all the buildings and rebuilding them every time there's a change in the building code. We, we obviously don't do that. We retrofit where, where needed and necessary, but uh, you know we, we don't go rebuild every building every time there's a there's a new type of concrete or a, a new way of building a joist or, or or something like that. So so but we have to adapt to new technologies and we have to we have to make them work uh, with the existing technologies that we have and and that, that that's definitely a, a challenge uh, that that uh, that most people in most industries will have with, with digital transformations, but I think in finance, given the focus on technology over the years, it's, it's especially, uh, especially apt. Um, scalability is, is, is absolutely you know, uh, uh, top of mind as well in terms of um, working across geographies, working across teams, um, hundreds if not thousands of applications and environments that need to be managed. Um, and how do, we, how do we do that and still get the velocity uh, that the business requires in terms of our software delivery, and of course the reliability that we're all expecting, because uh, you know I, I know when I walk up to the ATM, I would very much like it to work and give me the money uh, that I need, or when I'm paying for my groceries uh, at the checkout lane, I very much want everything to work. So reliability is is is, is obviously a, a very big deal. Not again, not that it's not a big deal in other industries, but. Uh, but uh, it tends to get noticed a lot more uh, quickly and a lot more seriously when you when you can't access your money. People take that personally. And then last on on this slide, manageability. Um, how can I keep all my teams happy? How can I speed up our releases? Um, how can I? What sort of analytics do I want to look at? What sort of metrics do I want to use uh, in order to kind of identify issues or maybe you know work and work with improve uh, compliance? Uh, with all my governance, uh, those sorts of things. So th th these are the lenses um, that, that, in our experience, uh, the finance industry kind of looks at software, looks at the, the digital transformations uh, through. And, and there are challenges. I mean, you know, some of these are unique to the industry and, and, and some of them aren't. Um, you know, disruption, uh, mergers, pivots, um, you know, the financial sector is certainly no stranger to disruption. Um, and, and that obviously isn't going to change. Um, there, there's a slide uh, that I haven't included in the deck today, but it was uh, it was made by a venture capital firm, and it it shows the homepage of a of a big U.S. bank, and then around it are arrayed 90 startups that are trying to um, basically eat away at various parts of this large bank's um, uh, business, and basically the, the logos of these 90. Uh, uh, companies all have a little arrow pointing to the part on the homepage of the large bank of the part of that bank's business that it's you know trying to trying to disrupt. So uh, you know even even 100, 200, 300 year old uh, institutions are are you know being challenged by 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 upstarts. Um, and mergers and acquisitions are a fact of life. Of course, the finance industry is the driver of that in other industries, and and of course, sort of the subject of of that itself. Uh, as 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 we see, and and those are complicated things. You know, when when you merge large companies, 
that have large infrastructure, um, that is a complicated thing. And, and again, not unique to finance. You look at the airline industry, for example, um, United Airlines and Continental Airlines, when, when they merged, it was probably half a decade uh, before the the technical systems aspects of of those mergers were were of uh, of that merger was all ironed out, um, it it takes a long time to do these things, um, and you know it, patience is is required and resilience is required and and innovation is required to 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 do that, um, the the you know and in some places in 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 the world entire technology generations are being skipped. Um, you know, large parts of the world just skipped copper infrastructure directly and 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 went to went to mobile. Uh, and mobile payment systems are are dominant, uh, where where banking isn't necessarily very dominant, or retail banking isn't necessarily very very dominant for doing you know micropayments and 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 those sorts of things. And and of course, you know, new platforms, new backend systems, new tools. You know, Kubernetes, serverless, microservices, uh, all of these things are 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 coming. Coming on, and, and of course, you know, regulations are are ever present, ever changing, ever evolving, ever unclear, um, or 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 too specific, or not specific enough. You know, all, all of these kinds of challenges that that we face, and then around all of this is process, and 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 of course, financial institutions have to be great at process by definition. You know, you 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 will not survive very long as a financial institution if if you don't pay attention to to your processes and and it's really the you know the 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 business you know is the lifeblood of of the of the world's economy it just has to work it has to be accurate it has to be secure it has to be well understood to be all of those things and um you know what's happened over over the last 40 years since kind of the beginning of the information technology uh, era um, you know, all of the layers of processes have been built on top of each other. You know, bank A buys bank B. They both do things differently. Um, you know, we can't retire one bank's systems because, you know, you just can't do that. Um, so we have to continue to work with both uh, systems and maybe over time try to figure out how to how to merge them together or how to retire one or the other. But but those are very difficult things to do. Those aren't it isn't it isn't clear that the right answer is to just get rid of you know bank A's systems and and, and switch them over to bank B. That that may not be practical or the timelines may be very long for for being able able to do that. Um, these things are not always very well documented. You know, it's it's not like you can walk in. And, and sort of know a priori all of the systems that you have to deal with before these things happen. So, so that's definitely a, a, a challenge. And then siloing and sprawl. Um, you know, we, 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 we tend to, we collect teams, we collect tools, we collect locations, endpoints, you know, vendors. Um, you know, the list kind of goes on and on and on in terms of the, 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 the amount of things that we have to manage and, and, and keep track of. And then, you know, we have to prove compliance, right? We, we need evidence. Uh, of of compliance and evidence that we're we're following the the, the governance that that we're supposed to, um, and it, you know it's kind of hard enough to do that by itself. But as technology evolves, and technology always leads law and regulation, um, you have to sort of figure out well how do we work this new technology using old regulations, and how do we work with regulatory bodies to evolve the regulations in a way that makes sense. You know again that doesn't get too specific and doesn't get too general. You know, kind of Goldilocks. You know, just just right. These are these are very challenging uh, things to to work through, and 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 then you know if if that weren't enough, and and you know lately this is one of my favorite quotes, and this one I will read. Um, there are decades where nothing happens, and there are weeks where decades happen, um, and 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 that is a you know is a pretty apt description of of what's been happening for for the last uh, for the last nine months to the world with with the with the COVID virus the COVID virus. And you know we've all had to adapt, um, and and this has been this has been one of those sort of watershed moments. I mean, obviously this is a this is a once in a hundred years kind of thing uh, happening. You know, quite literally, if we go back to 1918 and and, and the pandemic flew back then, and and it's been incredibly disruptive. It's it's disruptive for families. It's disruptive for companies. Um, all of a sudden, everybody's working from home. Um, so what is what has been you know what has been a very familiar literally an unstructured space now all of a sudden becomes a very structured space. Mom is working in in one bedroom, dad is working in the kitchen, um, child one is is trying to do schoolwork in the living room, child two well there isn't a room for child two to do anything so you know th this becomes very challenging and 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 we you know we all have to adapt and this has been a stress not just you know kind of psychologically and personally for everyone clearly. Uh, but but also for companies and, and especially for companies that were kind of 100% office based, 
um, that all of a sudden, almost literally overnight, had to switch uh, and, and turn around to now be remote. You know, we're all remote workers now, uh, by and large. Uh, and, and you know, in, in the case of CloudBees, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of explain, you know, we're a remote company to begin with. So to, so to be frank, that hasn't been incredibly disruptive uh, for us because the vast majority of our employees work from home. Uh, some worked in 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 in, uh, in sharing spaces and, and and those sorts of things, but but by and large, the the the, the culture and, and the layout of of CloudBees as a company is we're spread across. I think it's 22, 23 countries, um, so we're all remote and kind of used to that. So so that part hasn't been very strange for us, but clearly it's been very new and strange and stressful for 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 the vast majority of of, of companies out there, uh, and it's you know no. No discussion on this topic can't acknowledge that and, and, and the role that it, that it has played uh, recently in, in, in what we're doing. So pivoting a little bit to sort of you know, talking about software, software delivery, um, getting software out the door has always been a tricky thing. Um, and, and doing it at scale uh, with governance in, in complicated industries with, with lots of different teams is it's a, it's a complex problem. You know, they're, they're, we, we can talk about trying to simplify it, but, uh, you know, it's never going to get that simple. Um, that, that, that's, just, that's just a fact of life, at least not in, not in my lifetime and probably not in the lifetime of anybody uh, who's listening to me uh, talk about this right now. Um, you know, we, we have a multitude of teams. We have a multitude of applications. Uh, we have a multitude of processes that we use to, you know, to go from idea to production to where our customers can 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 realize the value of, of, of the software that that we're creating, um, and 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 that's that's just complicated, right? Um, it's 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 complicated to do, um, and then you know scaling this process and 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 dealing with its complexity, all the different teams, tools, processes, and managing the risk around that, you know, is is just difficult, right? As as things scale up, you start to lose visibility, you you start to lose control. Um, you start to worry about governance and, and you know, traditionally uh, the way to, to kind of attempt to gain back visibility, attempt to gain back control and attempt to gain back uh, governance is to slow down, uh, is, to, is to kill the pace, right? Is to, is to put lots of structure in place to make sure that, you know, we dot every I and cross every T every single time and every step of the way. But that also kills productivity um, um, ultimately. And, and, you know, what, what, what companies struggle with in, in, in general is, you know, how do we move fast and not break things um, or at least not break things in production, right? Um, it, it's, it's one thing for, you know, for, for, a, for a social app uh, to be down or to have some problems, you know, boo-hoo. Uh, but, you know, again, if I can't get to my money, uh, I'm going to be a little upset. Uh, so it's, 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 it's a different world, uh, world that we live in in, in finance. And, and you know, this is just a fact of, of modern software delivery in modern enterprises. You know, multiple teams, multiple processes, multiple tools and, 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 and stacks. And, you know, the, 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 the technologies that, that we bring to bear on this, not just, you know, cloud-based technologies, but the industry in general and open source uh, as well is, is, you know, continuous integration, building early, building often, providing rapid feedback to developers that, that the changes that they've committed are not, you know, are not, are not breaking things, obviously. Uh, and then we also work with, with continuous delivery, um, kind of downstream from the continuous integration, making sure that we do follow on tests for that. You know, the, 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 we want to make sure that we have a, you know, a straight path in, into production. Now, you know, that sounds scary to a regulator. That sounds scary to a lot of people, but, but, you know, truthfully, the, the, the more automated we make things, the easier we make it to govern it, quite frankly. Um, we have to put the right gates in place. We have to make sure that we do all the right things. Um, but, but generally, um, when, when you automate things, uh, you tend to take away the variability and, and sort of the, the fallibility of humans. And, and, and you know, we put computers to work doing the repetitive tasks that need to be done the same way every time, every day, day in, day out. Uh, and 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 save you know save humans for the more creative judgment uh, related processes. Um, so and, and continuous delivery is a core part of that. You know, kind of what what are all the things that we need to do in order to once we've built our software, test it, qualify it, you know, get it out the door. And the get it out the door part is is really orchestration. Now. If I'm, I'm if I'm five people working in a garage in a, in a startup, you know, my release orchestration, you know, consists of somebody saying, all right, I'm releasing. 
Um, obviously, in, in, in financial institutions, it's quite a bit more complicated than that. And in, and in most large enterprises, it's, it's, it's quite a bit more complicated than that. Um, it, the, there are coordination activities that have to happen. There are, you know, we, 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 we got to make sure that, you know, compliance uh, is, is being met when we do this release. Do we have all the right disclaimers in place? Do we have the right documentation in place? Have we done the right training? Um, if, if we're changing our retail systems, you know, are we rolling things out uh, and, and our customers aware that it's coming? Are, are, our, are our employees aware that it's coming? You know, you, you, you can't just sort of drop new things in on the world uh, unannounced. And, 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 you know, that tends to be uh, historically part of, part of release orchestration. A new thing that, that's happening, which is very exciting and, and you know, something that, that we have uh, products around is, is feature management. Um, one of the things that I that I talk about in, in the last year or so is how we've we've gone in in the last you know 15 years or so uh, from from uh, you know if, if you go back you know say 20 years um, most software companies were working on 12 18 month 24 month product cycles you know you'd go a year or more between releases that was the way things were done back then and that's too big. Um, you know, a, a, an 18 month release cycle is just, that's just too big. That's a very large batch size. It's fairly well known in the software industry. You know, small batch sizes work better, agile works better, you know, these kinds of things. But we, we made a pivot, you know, 15 years or so when we started doing continuous integration. And at that point, a lot of what we did became about the build. Um, the build, the build, the build. Is the build working? Is it running? Are we doing the right things? And, and the problem with that though is the build is too small. Um, because a build is just that. It's just, you know, a set of changes that we made to the code. We've now built them. Um, that doesn't mean that we're done. That doesn't mean that what we built is releasable. Uh, that doesn't mean that we sort of have critical mass in, in that build to, to tell the world, hey, we've got some new stuff. Um, so, so there's obviously something in between that we have to worry about. And, and so the Goldilocks situation that, 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 we're, that we're in, in in the last few years is, is these 18-month releases we used to do were too big. And the builds that, that we obsess over correctly are too small. And, and, and what we really want to do and, and kind of the, the right size of, of thing to worry about is features. Um, and, and, and that's because that's the, that's the unit of value that we deliver to our customers is, is features. You know, and especially if you, if you take a, a broad definition of the word feature as, you know, fixing a bug is a feature, fixing a vulnerability is a feature, adding new functionality is, is a feature, right? And, and what we really care about is, am I ready to release this feature? Am I ready to get this feature out, out the door? Not, is this build ready to go out the door? And not, is this 18 months worth of accumulated work uh, ready to go out the door? So what we're seeing increasingly in, in the industry is our, our, our products around things like feature flags, being able to control the runtime behavior of products without redeploying. So being able to turn on, turn off functionality in, in the software at runtime in production you know, either for everyone or for individual customers or for individual regions or to turn on an experiment and, and, and maybe run it for a few people and, 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 you know, get results based on that and then maybe continue the experiment, maybe discontinue the experiment. Uh, so, so feature flagging is, is, is something that's becoming more prominent. And, and you know, my opinion is we'll, we'll start to focus more on features as the thing that we want to manage around, not builds, not releases. Um, in, 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 in general, what we care about are, are the features. Because the second the feature is ready, you want to get it out the door, right? You don't want to be beholden to the other 12 features that are unrelated uh, to, 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 to wait before you, you, uh, you, you go out the door. And, and around this, we have things like value stream management, which, which is really you know, mapping out and understanding uh, in detail all of the things that you do to get stuff out the door. Uh, and, and, and that's a very important thing to know how to do, especially in a, in a regulated uh, industry like, like software. So, so how does this relate and how does this bring us then sort of in, in you know, nearing the conclusion here in terms of, of, of resilient DevOps, right? What is resilient DevOps? Um, you know, resilient DevOps is when your organization can confidently release new applications and safely adapt to change, right? And, and you know, you can sort of substitute features or bug releases or, or vulnerability fixes for, for releasing new applications, right? Can I, can I confidently push features functionality out the door? Can I adopt new technologies? Can I, can I make them work with existing technologies? Can I do this at the speed and scale demanded by the business? Do I have the analytics and the insight to measure and improve my results on, on my software delivery process? Am I able to prove compliance 
to, to governance regulations as part of doing this. Uh, and, and can I, you know, instantly and gracefully, uh, hopefully uh, re respond to, to problems as they arise, whether they're um, technical problems, vulnerabilities, bug fixes, or whether they're business problems, competitive pressure, uh, those sorts of things, or or existential world issues like pandemics or financial crises and and and, and those sorts of things. So so that really is you know that that's the the structure around which you know we 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 think around uh, resilient DevOps and 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 how we how we build products for that. So so uh, you know when it kind of comes down to it. Um, you know, kind of what's the blueprint for, for resiliency? Well, well, model and automate everything, right? Because it, 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 if, you, if you automate something, that means you have understood it. Uh, that means you have looked at what it is that you're doing and you have codified it, right? You, 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 have, you have put that into some form of code and, 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 and now it can be run repeatedly over and over and over. And you don't have to worry about somebody being, you know, sleep deprived and skipping a step accidentally or, or you know, rebooting the wrong system or, or, or those sorts of things. So automation across the stack is, is, is very important. And, and, you know, one of the things I talk about in, 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 in front of, you know, anybody who listens is, is automation is auditing. Um, there's, it's more subtle than that, but automation is a huge part of what's, 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 what's involved in auditing. If you think about auditing as document what you do and then prove that you do what you documented. And, and automation is, the definition of an automation is the documentation uh, of, of what you do. And the runtime record of an automation is the proof that you did what you documented. So, so automation plays a, a key role for, for, especially in the financial industry, uh, uh, around uh, governance and, and regulations and, 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 and those sorts of things. Another important part of this resiliency is, is, is self-service. Um, providing audit ready pipelines and automation as a service. Um, when, you're, when you're in a large organization, a large enterprise, you know, if you have every single organization, every single team doing things their own way, well, that's chaos. That's the Wild West. Now, at the same time, you don't want to sort of clamp down and say everybody has to do everything exactly the same way because that's not appropriate either. So, so systems that provide things like self service. I have a new product or a new service or a new microservice or a new component that I'm building. And it's this kind of technology stack. And I need to set up a software delivery pipeline for that. I need to do the CI aspect of it. I need to do the continuous delivery aspect of it. I need to do the release automation and the governance and, and, and audit and compliance aspects of it. And, and so providing those things as, as self-service to your team members to your to your uh, to to your uh, to the people building the software is 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 key. So kind of a self service catalog of of things that you can do is is something that we found very very powerful in in our products and 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 very you know highly a, a adopted by our customers in order to to provide these kinds of things as services to their own employees doing this so that the right way the governed way the secure way is the easy way the default way uh, very 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 important. And, 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 you know, being able to adopt new technologies while still embracing what you have, right? Because again, you know, new technologies come around the corner just about every hour, right? I mean, there's a new shiny thing every single day. Um, and, and, you know, some of them are, are, are going to shine brightly for a week and then go away. And some of them are going to be, you know, are going to be uh, changing the, the landscape in which, in which we operate. You know, they, some of them become the water in which we swim uh, to, to some extent. But at the same time, as I said earlier, you know, we don't go out and throw out all the old applications that we built on, you know, traditional client service systems or traditional, you know, sort of older mainframe technologies and those sorts of things, because you just don't have the resources to go rebuild the world every time there's a new technology that comes along. So these things all have to interoperate. These things all have to not be left behind. Um, that's very important. And, and, it's 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 lovely. It's lovely to work in a world where everything is a green field and everything is a blank sheet of paper, and I get to use the new technologies for everything. But the reality is, once you have something, once you have a product, you now have to support it and and going forward. And in the case of of, of you know many industries, that means for years, for decades. Uh, very important to do that. So you know, embrace, don't replace, um, because you're not going to be able to replace. It's 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 not you know in in in, in it's not practical. Uh, to go replace all the technologies, all the products that you have every time something new comes along. You want to monitor and track releases. You know, you want 360 degree visibility as much as possible into everything, all your builds, all your release statuses, 
and 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 especially you know what 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 is the status of this feature where are we with this feature are we ready to release have we tested it have we exposed customers to it have we documented it have we checked compliance have, you know all of these kinds of things have to happen you know where are the bottlenecks where are we getting stuck you know in in a if we do a value stream mapping of 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 how things make it out the door where are the bottlenecks you know where where are we losing time where are we uh, delaying time to market uh, just because we have you know, uh, a process bottleneck or a tooling bottleneck or a, a culture bottleneck, uh, all of those kinds of things are, are very important to, to, to go after uh, and, and, and do. And, and, you know, build in security and compliance. Easy to say, difficult to do. Um, but, but you know, th this is not something that's optional. Um, you know, the, 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 you know, DevSecOps is, is, a, is a very uh, popular topic these days. Uh, you know, some people like to say that's really just DevOps always because the S is silent in DevSecOps um, is, 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 is the joke. But, but you know, reusable um, kind of security first, compliance first pipelines that are designed to, to work across teams, across environments, across geographic locations are, are a very key aspect. And, and, you know, kind of going back to self-service, if, if, if part of your, your process involves, hey, we, if you're using containers, then all of your containers must be scanned by this and that tool uh, before you go into this staging environment or, or this production environment, those sorts of things. Well, how do you make sure every team is doing that? Well, one of the ways that you can make sure that every team is doing that is self-service pipelines, where by definition, the pipelines that they use, that they create, come from a, a, you know essentially a predefined, a preset, a pre-approved, if you will, set, set of pipelines that, that you can use. Now, you may have a team that, that, that comes and says, look, I've looked at the menu. And nothing that's on the menu fits what I'm doing, and that will happen. And at that point, you know, you you you, it's a judgment call. Um, do you talk to that team and inspect them a little bit closer and say, yeah, you think you're different, but you're not, and let me tell you why? Or hey, maybe we've discovered a new thing that we got to put on the menu. Just like when you, well, when we used to go to restaurants, um, you know, you sometimes you order off the menu, but it takes longer. It's a little bit more difficult. Would you like what what you want as a restaurant is for everybody to order off the menu so you can you can have the efficiency and the known process of of going. But you know, every once in a while, new stuff shows up. You want to be able to integrate and orchestrate all of the testing, all of the security into that deli uh, delivery process, the development process, and have all the right, you know, approval gates and checks, ideally automatic, so we don't have to all get in a room and read off lines on a spreadsheet, which a computer is, you know, equally good at doing and making sure that if if the if if our if our governance process says we will have X amount of code coverage, for example, then you know, you, you, you don't need a human to look at the code coverage to decide whether it's above a threshold or below a threshold. You, you can easily uh, fail a pipeline automatically without having to get humans in a room uh, to do that. Um, again, let the humans do the creative judgment aspects and let the computers do the things that are that are easy wrote and, and, and automatic. Um, and then, you know, you kind of want to model and prepare for failure. Um, lots and lots of organizations kind of set up their pipelines, assuming that everything will just succeed. Well, that's just not the real world. You know, you, you have to model failure. What happens if we fail at this stage? Where do we go back to? Where do we kind of restart things? If, if, if we get into staging and we have a problem, do we go back to development? Do we go back to QA? Do we re-roll the build? I mean, th these are all things that we have to think about and, uh, and, and, and worry about to, to build resilient, uh, resilient DevOps, resilient software delivery. Um, you know, what we want, the outcomes that we desire are we want agility and control, right? We want portability and consistency. Um, we, we always and, and forever will want higher efficiency and, and higher effectiveness. Uh, and of course, we want to be secure and compliant in the, in the development, delivery and, 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 and production of, of our software. And, you know, Cloudbees, we, we work with a, with a ton of, of, uh, of organizations in the financial industry, and, and we love them as customers because they bring us hard problems, and we like to work on hard problems, and we like to solve them. Um, so I will, uh, I will uh, I'll stop bragging there uh, and, uh, and stop, and maybe we can do a little bit of QA here. So James, back to you. Hi, Anders. Um, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, it was extremely engaging. Um, before we actually go into the q and I'd like to announce the winners of the Finos t-shirts. Um, so allow me to congratulate um, Dan Janovac um, from CIBC and Carolyn King from Stream Native. Um, you've both won a Finos t-shirt that will get shipped to you. So we have time for one question. 
Um, and that question is actually from Richard um, from Cape Pink. Um, and Richard asks, asks, what are the greatest challenges you face in your role related to open source, people, processes, resources, or something else? Um, all of the above, <laughs> uh, quite frankly. I mean, you know, the, the industry, the software industry, you know, stands on the shoulders of open source. Um, you know, we, we, you know, Cloudbees is, is at heart a commercial software company, right? We're, 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 not, a, we're not a charity. We're, we're, you know, we're in this to make money. But, but we're also a huge supporter and, and, and we benefit massively uh, from, from open source, you know, Jenkins being, you know, the, the, the large example there, uh, uh, clearly. Um, but, but that involves a certain amount of, you know, you have to, you have to relinquish control. Um, you know, and, 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 and you know, the, the well-run open source projects in the world uh, are, are, you know, kind of owned in a, in a, in a legal uh, entitlement sense by, by foundations. You know, the Linux Foundation, the, the C, you know, CDF, the CNCF, you know, all of, all of these various organizations. And so you have to be willing to work and, and kind of relinquish that part of it uh, uh, in order to be, uh, you know, a good faith uh, corporate citizen of, 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 of the uh, of the open source uh, community, um, so I, so I think the challenge, you know, that that is a challenge, uh, not specifically, I would say, for us, because I think we've been, you know, we 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 work that angle, I, I think, with with all the various foundations which we participate in and support and, and and do those sorts of things. But but you know, then then you don't you don't control. So if you know if we decided tomorrow that, uh, or if I decided tomorrow that, oh, I want Jenkins to do X, Y, and Z, well, I can't just go do that. Um, you know, I, we got to get community buy-in for that. So, so one of the challenges, and this is something that every kind of mixed commercial and open source company out there, you know, faces, uh, you know, someday is the thing that we're building today. Is it is it for the open source part of the world or is it for the commercial part of the world? And and you know that that that's part of the nut that you have to crack and do from a from a process perspective, from a cultural perspective, uh, from a, from a technical perspective, and and you know I, I I think we do that you know every day fairly well, but you know there's obviously days when those those kinds of decisions are are, are trickier, um, you know perhaps even controversial, uh, uh, you know in terms of oh is is this something that that we contribute back to open source or or is this something that you know we keep for ourselves, uh, if you will. So I think that's that's part of the challenge of of. Kind of working in in that uh, in that boundary between uh, between commercial and uh, and open source. So that's great. So we're at the end of our time, um, Anders. So I'd like to say thank you very much to Anders Walgren, uh, VP of Technology Strategy at Cloudbees. Um, for everybody who's asked a question in the chat, we'll make sure that we get you um, some answers, and we'll get those answers back to you. Um, and with that, I'd like to say thank you to everybody who's been on the call today. It's been phenomenal. Thank you very much, Anders. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you, everyone.